So this is actually so if you want to go through this one, there's some activities and readings. Okay. You will enjoy that more than three The Lord be with you. Good morning. I want to welcome you, those who are here in person and those who are joining us at home for the 15th Sunday after Pentecost, September 18th, 2022. This morning we will be celebrating Holy Communion. So for those of you that are at home, if you can uh, make sure you have your uh, bread and wine or uh, bread and juice available for when the time comes. Uh, we will be celebrating communion in the, uh, the fashion that we've been doing it uh, since COVID, uh, where you'll get your elements uh, at the back of the church uh, when the time comes. And of course, there'll be further instruction at that time. As we are invited today to consider what it means to be managers rather than owners of all that we have, it is crucial to recognize that we are bought with a price. Christ Jesus, himself human, gave himself a ransom for all. Apart from the generosity of God, we have nothing. We are nothing. By God's gracious favor, we have everything we need. I invite you to take a moment of silent reflection as we prepare our hearts for worship. Please rise if you are able for our hymn in the Cranberry Hymnal number 880, O God Beyond All Praising. Please rise if you are able.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace let us pray to the Oh! 
We will continue with the prayer of the day. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God among us, we gather in the name of your Son to learn love for one another. Keep our feet from evil paths. Turn our minds to your wisdom and our hearts to the grace revealed in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first reading is taken from the book of Jeremiah, beginning at the eighth chapter. My joy is gone, grief is upon me, my heart is sick. Hark the cry of my poor people from far and wide in the land. Is the Lord not in Zion? Is her king not in her? Why have they provoked me to anger with their images, with their foreign idols? The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. For the hurt of my poor people, I am hurt. I mourn and dismay has taken hold of me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then has the health of my poor people not been restored? Oh, that my head were a spring of water and my eyes a fountain of tears, so that I might weep day and night for the slain of my poor people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be. We'll continue with Psalm at the 78th chapter. I will read the light print and you will read the bolded print. O oh God, the nations have come into your inheritance. They have profaned your holy temple. They have made Jerusalem a heap of rubble. They have given the bodies of your servants as food for the birds of the air, and the flesh of your faithful ones, the beasts. They have shed their blood like water on every side of Jerusalem and there was no one to bury them. We have become a reproach to our neighbors, an object of scorn and derision to those around us. How long will you be angry, O Lord? Will your fury blaze like fire forever? Pour out your wrath upon the nations that have not known you, and upon the kingdom that have not called up on your name. For they have devoured Jacob and made his dwelling a ruin. Remember not our past sins, that our compassion be swift to meet us, for we have been brought very low. Help us, O God, our Savior, for the glory of your name. Deliver us and forgive us our sins for your name's sake. The second reading is taken from the first book of Timothy at the second chapter. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for everyone, for kings and all who are in high positions, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and dignity. This is right and is acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God. There is also one mediator between God and humankind, Christ Jesus, himself human, who gave himself a ransom for all, this was attested at the right time. For this, I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth. I am not lying. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. The word of the Lord. Please rise if you are able for our gospel acclamation. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 16th chapter. Then Jesus said to his disciples, There was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was squandering his property. So he summoned him and said to him, What is this I hear about you? Give me an accounting of your management, because you cannot be my manager any longer. Then a manager said to himself, what will I do? 
now that my master is taking the position away from me. I am not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. I have decided what to do so that when I am dismissed as manager, people may welcome me into their homes. So summoning his master's debtors one by one, he asked the first, How much do you owe my master? He answered, A hundred jugs of olive oil. He said to him, Take your bill, sit down quickly, and make it fifty. Then he asked another, And how much do you owe? He replied, A hundred containers of wheat. He said to him, Take your bill and make it eighty. And his master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of dishonest wealth, so that when it is gone, they may welcome you into the eternal homes. Whoever is faithful in a very little is faithful also in much. And whoever is dishonest in a very little is dishonest also in much. If then you have not been uh, faithful with the dishonest wealth, who will entrust you the true riches? And if you have not been faithful with what belongs to another, who will give you what is your own? No slave can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Invite the children to come up. Okay. You sit here. Okay. Where's the other one? Oh, he's out there. Okay. Well, we will start, and maybe he'll come with us. So, how are you doing today? Good? Oh, I hear some voices out there. That's not that, No, you know, he, yeah, he doesn't sound like he's having a very good day right now. No, no, no. I think your mom's with him. Well, I don't know why he's having a bad day, because today's a special day for him. And it's a special day for you. What is it? Your birthday today, and how old are you today? Seven. And how old is Dominic today? Seven. Well, if you're seven and he's seven, how can that be? You both born on the same day? Yeah. No. No, you weren't born on the same day. Dominic was born first, but I can't stop. Oh, he was born first, but you got because you guys are twins, right? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So maybe later we'll do something special, but I want to know right now. What kinds of things make you cry? Oh, when the door gets closed and there's no lights in the room, you get scared, and so you cry when you're scared? No. Yeah, no? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, you tell your mom. Okay, and if your mom doesn't turn on the light because it's bedtime? Then you cry? Yeah. How about you, Sarah? What kinds of things make you cry? Are you too old to cry now? Yeah, yeah. Okay, when when somebody that you care about is sick, it uh, makes you scared that something bad might happen, so you cry out of fear that they might get worse. Okay, what about you? sick, Okay. If so, if someone is sick and they can't play, or uh, somebody is hurt, or somebody hurts you, you cry. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, there's a special word that we talk about when we cry because somebody else is hurting and we feel their hurt in our heart, called empathy. We hurt because someone we care about is also hurting, and so we can cry. Well, in the first lesson that I read from the prophet Jeremiah, he is someone who cried a lot. Yeah. A grown man cried a lot because 
He loved his people so, so much. And he could see that they were hurting and they were suffering because they sometimes turned their backs on God. And he loved God so much and he loved the people that he had empathy for their pain and their suffering because he really wanted them to know God's love. And so he would cry tears of pain from his heart and he would continue to tell them that no matter what, God still loves them. And he wanted to turn his tears of pain into tears of joy because they got the message. And so it's good to be to have the empathy to cry for others because it tells how much we love and care for one another. And that's what a good thing about being part of a church, a, a congregation, is that we love each other so much that when one person is hurting, another and all of us can hurt with them and we can walk with them in the midst of their pain and their suffering because they're part of our big family. Yeah. So let's have a prayer and then we'll do something special. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for the love that you have for us and the love that we have for one another. When one of us hurts, all of us hurt. But thank you that we have a church family that stands with us, that supports us, and cries with us because of our love for each other. Amen. Okay, so when someone has a birthday on the Sunday that we gather, we sing happy birthday to them. So we're going to sing happy birthday to Dominic and Asher. Even though Dominic isn't in the room, we'll have to sing it really loud so he can hear us. Okay? <laughs> no, no, you can stay here so we can sing for you. Okay, here we go. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Dominic and Asher. Happy birthday to you. And many more. Okay, time for Sunday school. So go on up. Thank you. A well, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. One night I had a dream. I dreamed I was walking along the beach with the Lord. And across the sky flashed the scenes from my life. For each scene, I noticed two sets of footprints in the sand. One belonged to me, the other to God. When the last scene from my life flashed before us, I looked back at the sand, the footprints in the sand. I noticed that many times along the path of life, there was only one set of footprints. I also noticed that it happened at the very lowest and saddest times in my life. Well, this really bothered me, and I questioned God about it. God, you said that once I decided to follow you, you would walk with me all the way. But I noticed that during the most troublesome time in my life, there's only one set of footprints. I don't understand why in times when I needed you most, you would leave me. And God replied, my precious Precious child, I love you, and I would never leave you during your times of trials and suffering. When you see only one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. 
Many of you are familiar with these words written by Canadian poet Margaret Powers from her poem, Footprints. Now it tells a story of God's gracious love for us even during the times we either take his presence for granted or we fail to notice him at work in our lives and we try to take a different path than the one he wants us to travel. Well, there were times in Israel's history where they too tried to take a different path than the one God wanted them to take. Now, when things were going well for them, they praised God for their good fortune. But then they would forget about him or take his presence for granted until things started going bad. Then they blamed him for their misfortune. But they also repented and returned to the Lord. And God, in his mercy, would forgive them time and time again. Well, Jeremiah, the prophet of God, laments over their inconsistency and lack of uh, constant praise towards God. He saw the path that they had chosen, the path that led only to destruction. He saw their footprints that were heading in the wrong direction. Now, at the time of the writing of our first lesson, the people of Israel had forgotten that God had carried them throughout their troubled history. They either took his presence for granted or had turned to other items to worship to the false gods made of wood and stone. See, ever since Jeremiah was a youth, he was called to be a prophet of God to speak to the people of Israel. He called them out of their lives of sin and neglect for the word of God and into a life of repentance, a life that overflowed with the abundance of love and mercy and a life of constant worship in the presence of God. Now, as he traveled through the land, meeting, mingling, and inviting all people to hear his words of gracious blessing, his call to repentance, and even the harsh words of condemnation for those who refused to listen, he came to love the people of Israel. Now, in many biblical commentaries, Jeremiah is referred to as the weeping prophet because of this text where he cries over Israel's failure to acknowledge God, resulting in the imminent destruction of his people because of their sin. So in this text, he laments over the people's lack of love and concern for God, resulting in a lack of love and concern for one another. So when the Babylonians captured them and took many of them into exile, instead of accepting responsibility for their problems, Although they did acknowledge God's presence, it was only to blame him for the terrible things that were happening in their lives. Instead of calling out to God for help and comfort, they called out against him, forsaking his presence and his comfort. So when the time of their defeat and exile at the hands of the Babylonians was at hand, instead of remembering God's faithfulness and returning to him, they either turned to the idols of wood and stone or they turned to their own power. So again, in this text, Jeremiah is heartsick over their behavior and he's weeping over their decision to turn away from God because he loves them so much and he wants them to return to God. See, the pain that he felt in his heart was so strong because he loved the people and that they refused to listen to him and so they ended up suffering the consequence of their own stubbornness. But even in the midst of his pain and sorrow, he reminds them that God is still there. God is the balm, the ointment of healing, the one that cures all ills. By his grace, God is the one who will rescue them from their sin of not seeking his help. All they were asked to do is repent. And then ask for his help. Well, it took them 70 years. But when they asked for God's help, he did take them by the hand and lead them down the path of righteousness, out of captivity, and back into the promised land. God never forgot about them. And as we read in other texts written during this time of exile, God was with them, even in Babylon. But we, like them, still often fail to ask for God's help 
or we fail to acknowledge His presence at all times and on every path of our life's journey. So as we journey through this life, as we, like in the poem, look back on the events of our lives, we can ask ourselves, when have our feet taken a path that's gotten us into trouble? How often do we praise God when things are going well in our lives and then blame Him when things take, seem to take a sudden turn? Now, I remember a conversation I had with a friend who was struggling in his personal life. He vented his anger towards God because his own plans for his life were not playing out the way he thought that they should be. During his ranting and his raving against God, he confessed that he was starting to have serious doubt of the very existence of God. He equated personal success and happiness with the presence of God, and personal failure meant God's non-existence. See, his way of thinking at that time in his life is referred to as a theology of glory, which suggests that God only walks with us when we have earned his presence and he ignores or punishes us when we've done wrong. But see, that goes against the theology of the cross that Luther taught, which promises that God, by his grace, is with us always, especially in the bad. The theology of the cross teaches us that God meets us in the midst of our struggles and he carries us in his arms of mercy uh, throughout uh, to the other side of whatever trouble we're facing. The theology of the cross says we never face our troubles or our struggles alone. But because my friend was struggling in his personal life, he had his priorities mixed up. Instead of seeing God as far away and blaming him for his own misfortune, he needed to reach out even more for the arms of comfort offered by God. And I ached inside whenever this devout man had a faith crisis because no matter what I said, he was not convinced that God, if he existed, cared about him. As we sat there talking, my heart ached for him and his pain. But no matter how much I wanted to take his pain away, I also knew that I couldn't do that. See, that wasn't my responsibility. But what I could do, and what was my responsibility, was to not leave him alone in his pain and suffering, but to sit with him in it, and to simply be present, and to allow God to either work through me, or for me to put aside my ego and step aside and let God work through someone else to help my friend. As I reflected on my friend's words, I started to wonder how many times I've ever thought or felt the same way. And what about you? Have you ever felt that God is far away and doesn't care about you anymore? Now maybe the majority of you who are here or those who have tuned in are here because you love coming here to rejoice in the Lord, to praise and worship the one who walked with you every, everywhere you go. Coming here on Sunday mornings is more than habit, more than duty. It is your joyous response to God's faithfulness to you, even if you have not always felt his presence. His promise to you is that he will always be with you too. Or maybe you're going through a rough period in your life right now and think that God has forsaken you. And so maybe you've decided that you don't need God right now. Maybe you don't even want to be here this morning, but you came out of a sense of duty or habit. Maybe you're on the verge of leaving the church because of some unmet needs. Well, the people of Israel suffered from periods of doubt and feelings of alienation, but Jeremiah never gave up on them and proclaimed that even in their sinfulness and times of doubt, of doubt, God did not forget about them either. Pastor George will try to never give up on you, 
I promise to try to not give up on you. This congregation will try to not give up on you. And God certainly does not give up on us. Even when our best efforts to help and support one another fall short, God never fails to stay right beside us, carrying us in his arms of mercy. Now, when I met my friend again, I was happy to hear that although his life situation had not changed much, he had once again felt the presence of God in the midst of his troubles. He told me that he had rejoined the choir in his church and he had felt God's presence through the people in his congregation. He rediscovered that God is alive in his word, in the music sung each week, in the people he brings into his life, and through the blessed elements of the sacraments. Now to this day, I don't know if it was my presence that helped him, or was it someone else? But in reality, it doesn't matter, because his faith was restored, and God was and is once again glorified in my friend's life. And there's a glimmer of hope for you too. It is a glimmer that's brought you here today, either for the first time or for a last time to see if God will become real to you again. The promise God made to Israel, the promise he made to my friend, the promise he's made to me, he makes to you. He is here to be your strength and to be your comfort. The good news of the gospel is that the promise my friend rediscovered for himself is the same promise offered to us who gather here each week. It is a promise offered to us today that in spite of what we are experiencing in our personal lives today, God is here. God is in our midst, reassuring us that he is here, carrying us through the, to the other side. As Christians, we know that we have the great balm, Jesus Christ, who will heal our spiritual ills when we simply call on his name. When we take him up on his offer to heal us, he will do it. Now, we may not experience immediate delivery from our present difficulties, but the promise of Christ is that there's nothing that this world can throw our way that will separate us from God's love in eternity. Our baptism into the death and resurrection of Jesus reminds us that God has claimed us for all eternity and will never leave us nor forsake us. Even if we cannot feel his presence every waking moment of our day, God is there. That's the gospel for our lives. And so may we leave here today, hearing the call to return to the Lord our God, to know his presence in our lives, and trusting that no matter where our faith journey may take us, Jesus is right here with us carrying us through the difficult times and walking beside us in the joyous times. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds on Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able to sing our hymn of the day. For... O oh Christ, our hope in the Cranberry Hymnal. <laughs> Yeah.
Continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe, believe in, in God, God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ his only Son, our Lord. He, he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for our prayers of the people. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious God, we thank you for your constant and complete cancellation of all our debts. Contrasted with our often calculated way of doing business with one another, your love towards us seems unbelievably gracious. Forgive us when we fail to forgive others as we have been forgiven. Help us to be faithful in little and faithful in much. Lord, in your mercy. Eternal God, as children everywhere have returned, to, have to returned to school, bless all schools, colleges, universities, and all places of learning. Grant that they may be lively places for new discovery and the pursuit of wisdom. And grant that those who teach and those who learn may find you to be the source of all truth. Lord, in your mercy. Your Almighty God, we pray for all who hold authority and responsibility for the care of nations. Give courage, patience, and vision for the task to which they have been appointed, and strengthen Christians everywhere in our vocation of witness to the world and of service to others. Lord, in your mercy. Healing God, we pray for all who hurt or suffer, for the hungry and the homeless, the injured and the abused, the sick and the weary, we pray for the members and friends of our congregation, especially Karen, Brian, Nancy, Joe, Evelyn, Brenda, Jeanette, Diane, Sheldon, Carol, Margaret and Norman, Al and Tara, Stephen, Shane, Roly, Lynn, Marie, Inger, Mandy, Ruth, Lori, myself, Philip, the Trottiers, Marie, Peggy, Helen and Alcana, Vic, Stephen, Nancy, Bruce, Evelyn and Harrison, Vivian, Brian, His Majesty King Charles III and his family, and those we name in our hearts at this time. We pray also for any whose prayers are silent or whose needs are unspoken that all will experience your reassuring presence. Lord, in your mercy. God of comfort and consolation, we remember with thanksgiving, Ricky, who now rests from her labors. Look upon all those who knew her best and loved her most. Keep us in fellowship with all your saints and bring us at last to the joy of your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the poor. Guide the people of this land to use our wealth and resources so that all persons may find suitable, meaningful work, be treated with dignity, and receive a living wage for their labors. Lord, in your mercy. Abundant God, we pray for ourselves, especially for Evelyn. Help us to celebrate your generosity to all and teach us to live 
as if your kingdom were already here in its fullness. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please share that peace with one another. We will now continue with the offering. I'm happy to have my sister with me today, so we're going to sing for you. Love is the touch of intangible joy. Love is the force that no fear can destroy. Love is the goodness we gladly applaud. Love is where love is, for love is of God. Love is a lilt in a lingering voice. Love is the hope that can make us rejoice. Love is the cure for the frightened and blind. God is where love is, for love is of God. Love is the light in the tunnel of Love is the will to be whole once again. Love is the trust of a friend on the road. Love is where love is, for love is a Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Lift up your hearts to receive the benediction of our Lord. The God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. Our time for our weekly announcements.
The only one that I would like to make is to remind the council members of our meeting on Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock here at the church. Does anyone have any other announcements that need to be made at this time? After our sending him, um, due to the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, um, along with the King, we'll continue with the song afterwards of God Save the King. It is your choice whether you participate or not, but that will be the song at the end. Some may go, some may sing. We leave it up to you. We will continue with our sending him, Hallelujah, we sing your praises. Please rise if you are able, number 535, in our cranberry hymn. service. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. 